Elections, misinformation, fake news, identity theft, these are some of the terms that have been associated with social media scams over the years. The prominence of artificial intelligence has also exposed new trends of scamming social users such as deepfake AI. This is an online intelligence used by unscrupulous cyber criminals to manipulate and generate a trusted source's voice and images to commit fraud and scam on unsuspecting victims. But for for more on reputational risks involved with deepfake AI and how unsuspecting social media users can protect themselves and how they are being caught out so badly, we're joined in studio by Professor Stephen Sidley, who's a professor of practice from the Johannesburg Business School at the University of Johannesburg, and Chad Thomas, he's the Chief Executive Officer at the IRS Forensic Investigations. Uh, gentlemen, it's great to have you. Thanks very, very much for joining us on Morning Live. Thank Thanks you for having us. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's such a, uh, an important conversation that we're about to have here because we talk about fake news and many people think of it as, ah, oh, just an article that's come out that's not true and we just move on. But it's not like that. It is getting more and more sophisticated and this is now going into people's lives and ruining their lives. Perhaps you want to talk to us about the difference between fake news and deep fake and all of these kind of things that are around. Okay, so, so the, gold, the gold standard of trustability has always been, at least in the last century, photographs and later on video. If you could see it, you could believe it. And the die was cast when Photoshop came out in the early 90s, where you could change pixels and airbrush people's faces. It has indeed become more and more sophisticated to the point today where you can insert photographs into unfamiliar environments or environments that they weren't shot in, where you can shoot video and get the lips to move. And here's the problem, Ian. I saw the one that you were hit with. That was a particularly bad job. If you spent a few seconds looking at that video, you could tell it wasn't you. But I have seen stuff now that is not only unrecog un unrecognizable as fraud, mm. people talking, but also unrecognized to technology. So one has to accept the fact that this stuff is out there and except for one thing which perhaps we can talk about in a moment, you will not be able to see that the video is fraudulent. Yeah, and that, in fact let's play one because they now seem to be trying to get them even better. I mean for those, for those viewers that are not too aware of this, which it'll surprise me if you're not because the amount of people that approach me on a daily basis to ask me personally about, you know, I've become a victim of, of these scams where, you know, my face is on diet pills, it's on investment schemes and every day there's something new. But the deep fake AI videos that we're talking about. Here's one. This one was from a few days ago. So have a listen to this. Perhaps, I mean, you know my voice. You listen to it every morning. But here it is. But this is a deep fake version of me advertising something. So here we go. Take a listen. Hello, ladies. I want to tell you about a new product that has already helped thousands of women around the world. Active Keto Gummies is revolutionizing the weight loss industry. Many users report losing up to 23 pounds in just three weeks, and they're finally regaining their figures. This supplement works primarily as a fat burner. Treat yourself to the STARS treatment. Yes, they got the tone, the accent's completely wrong, but if you, if you just click on that, and you're not necessarily sort of looking closely, you think, oh, but there's a video, there's a story, there's a website, I can buy this and I can lose all this weight. The, hey, I'm gonna buy it, but your money goes. So, I, I mean, talk to me about this. I mean, let, let's, let's bring you into the conversation, Chad. I, I mean, these kind of things, how prevalent are they? Exceptionally so. Um, when one looks at deep fake, one looks at AI meets CGI, we know that it's, it's a problem that's going to just increase, increase straight into the stratosphere. Mm. We've had people cloning people's uh, social media accounts. We've had people actually steal people's social media accounts through manipulation. Why are they doing that? It's to create a revenue stream for a criminal, or, uh, for, for a criminal syndicate. So if they can use your likeness, um, your reputation, your brand to further their fraud, they will do so. Yeah. Now, obviously, it's, it's of grave concern, not just in respect of the scams that are taking place, but also in respect of evidence that's going to be presented in court at a later stage in respect of genuine CCTV footage or genuine recordings, because all of this is now going to be scrutinized. So whereas courts in the past have relied very heavily on photographic evidence, CCTV, etc., with all of this deep fake 
um, taking place and AI meeting CGI, you're going to have very clever defense attorneys questioning genuine footage. And it's going to be very difficult for the experts to prove otherwise the more sophisticated this becomes. And one must understand that AI is constantly learning. It's finding what mistakes it's been made and it's trying to remedy those mistakes to become as perfect to the reality as possible. Yeah. So, so how do we help ourselves? Because at the end of the day, social media is not helping us. And perhaps before we talk about how we can help ourselves, maybe we can talk about social media for a moment. Because I, I see a lot of th fake things, whether we talk about Facebook, Instagram, um, TikTok, all of these kind of things, you report it. So they give you the option to report these things as scams or fake. But this has been reported over and over and over again, but it's still, it's still there. Facebook's done nothing about it. TikTok tells you that, um, they, that this user is not violating any of their rules, but they are impersonating a person who happens to be me who has reported it, but they do nothing about it. These social media giants, I'm very worried about them because they seem to be aware and they do nothing about it. Do you have a comment on that, perhaps, Paul? Yeah, the, the, uh, the volume of fake stuff that is appearing, not only photographs, news, all of the other things, appearing on social media is far too large for Facebook or any of the social medias to do anything about. They're taking the position as we're a neutral, neutral media platform, we're not responsible for what's on here. The volume exceeds the ability of courts and the law to handle it by many orders of magnitude. So our solution is not going to be found in complaining to the people who platform this stuff. Yeah. It's too big. There is, there is a real solution to this stuff. So if, if I may, I'm just going to talk about Go that. Go for it, please. The solution to that stuff and the only solution to that stuff surprisingly lies in cryptography. And that is that a digital signature, cryptography, digital signature is attached to the footage at the moment it's created and it can't be changed and it's already being built into cameras. I think Sony is the first one with a, di with a digital signature standard. So if you take a picture of somebody, it attaches a signature to it and later on if somebody tries to do manipulation, it can't do it. Yeah. And there are many organizations working on that solution. Yeah. So, so that could be one thing that's coming to prevent it, but that's in, that's in the future. Unfortunately, yeah, we're going to have a whole lot of trouble when, until that becomes a global standard. Yeah. And I mean, we've, we've, we've seen this at play and we see massive cases. I mean, we just saw, you know, we see with the elections, we saw this happen with the US elections and the manipulation of, I mean, I'll just take the, the, the whole issue with the Donald Trump and the, and the Clinton. And we saw all of that taking place with Bill Pottinger and all of these kind of things. But it does manipulate the way people think and people lose a lot through this. What repercussions do the victims of this actually have? So I talk about both parties, those that have lost money, that have gone and given all of their information, their money is now being taken, do they have any chance of getting that money back, A, and B, the person who is being manipulated, the, let's take myself for instance, what, what do we have? We have incredible legislation in South Africa, we have the Cyber Crimes Act, which was promulgated last year, December, that act is now in full force. It also has a component to it that talks about fraud and how a person can be defrauded within that cyberspace. The problem is with all this incredible legislation, we need people that are able to investigate and prosecute those kind of crimes. And with South Africa being at an all time high in respect of contact crimes and other related crimes, it's very difficult to have enough trained personnel on the ground that are going to be able to investigate this. Also, if you think about it, because these crimes are sophisticated from a technological perspective, when you go to a charge office to lay a charge and you try to explain this yeah. to a person behind the charge office desk, that person may not necessarily understand technology. And it's going to be very difficult and frustrating for a complainant to be able to have a case registered, have a case escalated and have a specialized unit investigated. Also, of course, it's compounded by the sheer volume of these cases that are now doing the rounds. Yeah, indeed. And that's, and that's the problem. You may report it, you may but, but where do you get? And the, and the bottom line is, is that your bank's not going to help you. Uh, I mean, if you've, if you've gone and sort of transferred money into an account that is usually shut down so quickly and they move on once they've got your money, 
there's no way you're going to get that back. No. The worst, one of the worst cases I've heard, you've talked about some of the, the financial scams, but there are also financial scams which are both based on emotional scams and they have a much longer lasting effect. The worst that I've heard is something that's happening now in the United States and Mexico where the, the voice of a child has been cloned and the mother's phone rings and it's the child screaming oh. that she's been kidnapped yes. and also screaming as though she's being hurt at that moment and within seconds that mother is clearly going to transfer as much money as it takes and it is at this stage unstoppable and one has to just rely on on the on the, the power of the courts as as you talked about Chad over here to show examples um, of, of convicting people and the goodness of man and I'm afraid my faith is somewhat shaken in the goodness of man with with the tsunami of the stuff that's happening now and and, and you're right about that because people are there are there there are voices and faces behind this I mean yeah. I'll, I'll again I mean it, it's easy for me to speak on an example because of what's been happening with my identity and what's been going on I mean, there are people operating call centers they they are manning email addresses they are phoning you back they having full conversations with people about their money and how much money they're going to make and how amazing it is and then when you phone them back they disappear and you can never track them down or trace them yeah. and 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 this is the problem they know what they're doing they are scamming you out of thousands tens of thousands and yet they just do it like you say your faith in humanity is is just shaken fast. it's amazing how many people will steal without blinking with shame i didn't yeah. think that was evident before i saw this yeah it is true but what do we look for because that's now where we're at so it's getting bigger it's getting worse it is out there all the time how do we protect ourselves and educate ourselves to the fact that what is real and what is not real understand that the targets are generally people who are not tech savvy they're our generation. Yeah, yeah. It's our generation that have been targeted because we didn't grow up with a smartphone when we were 12. We weren't adept at the changes um, from a technological perspective that the youngsters of today are and the generations that have come after us. So we are being targeted specifically because of our status within society. We have most probably worked, we most probably have a small um, nest egg. And we need to be very wary of people that are offering us stuff. And you always hear that, that expression, I'm not going to repeat it. If it's too good to be true, it's too good to be true. Because we've repeated this so many times. The fact remains is you spoke about call centers. We call them boiler rooms. Mm. They started off in the 80s. They were selling penny stocks in the States. They've now become this beast worldwide where people call you. They're exceptionally confident. They're exceptionally convincing. That's where the term con artist comes from. And they are so confident and they are so convincing that they are not offering you a huge amount of return on your investment. They're offering you a better return on investment. And the way in which they're structuring it, there seems to be some or other uh, truth to it. And one must always understand when there's something that we call a black swan event taking place, be it COVID, be it the invasion of Ukraine, anything that goes against what is expected in the world, they will use this as an opportunity to monetize their scams. Mm. And we always have to be very wary of people that are coming out during those times. So for example, with, you, with the invasion of Ukraine, we saw a lot of people internationally sell, suddenly selling sunflower oil yes. because we knew there'd be a shortage. Yeah. With COVID, we saw the PPE phenomenon in South Africa, which became one of the biggest frauds ever perpetrated. Suddenly, everybody was involved in the buying and selling of masks. If you went onto your social media, your best friends who you knew were never in the medical field were selling masks, but they didn't know they were an extension of a fraud. They thought they had got a good deal and they were now going to sell to their client base. You know, those masks never existed. Unbelievable. And, and, and we fall for this. But I mean, are, are there simple things to look out for? For, for, for me, I mean, I, I would look at I'd look at the, the URL. So I, I have a look at that. I mean, you know, many of them have taken reputable news agencies and written this entire article about how things work on a News 24 template or a Times Live template or a Sowetan template. These are just the ones that I've seen and then stuck them on website addresses that have never heard of like handsomefisherman.com or you know whatever it may be and these websites just keep on changing uh, all the time is that a sign to look out for in terms of the url or url the url is an, is an obvious one if if but many people don't look at you no, the they, they click on the picture and they're, they're they're into the content before looking at the top so at, as chad said and as you mentioned before education is incredibly an important mm, mitigating factor 
But the fact is you can't educate everybody, and even if you can, can those people are going to find a way around that. Yeah. So if, if I can say as, as, as just a, a dollop of optimism for your viewers, is technology got us here, and I do believe that technology will get us out of this as well. Yeah, I hope so, because that is a, that is a dollop of, of, of confidence in this. But just a final closing point, and I, and I heard what you were saying, that the social media companies, you know, it's hard for them because there are so many. But I'm not buying into that. I don't think I can buy into that because you know, sometimes you can open up an account. You don't have to put an ID number in. You can be anonymous. I can make a fake name and I create a fake account and then I go and wreak havoc in people's lives. Should this be allowed in this day and age? Anonymity, when you are dealing on social media platforms that they know are stealing people's identities, stealing livelihoods and destroying lives, should this be allowed? Surely the blame also has to, in a way, lie with all of these social media giants. We never read the T's and C's. We just click, approve, and accept all. There's a program currently on Netflix called Black Mirror, and the very first is Joan is Awful. Yeah. And it shows I, I you that. where AI and CGI come together and the devastating consequences thereof. We have to be very careful. We have to take it upon ourselves. We can't rely on third parties to protect us anymore, especially in the cyber world. We've clicked on those T's and C's. There's no way we could hold Meta or X or any of these huge organizations responsible should we be defrauded. We have to be tech savvy. We have to learn or else we shouldn't be on those social media platforms. Wow. All right. Read the T's and C's. And they're long. You click yes and there's just like streams and reams of small print. I don't know. Anyway, be careful out there. Be careful out there, everybody. Professor Stephen Sidley, professor at practice at the Johannesburg Business School, uh, uh, University of Johannesburg. Thank you. And Chad Thomas, CEO of IRS Forensic Investigations, talking to us about the worrying prevalence of online scams and deep fake AI that is really causing a lot of people some damage out there.